Welcome to another video coverage of This Week in Rails. This week we had Emmanuel prepare the newsletter, and there's a lot of great announcements. And the first item is Rack 3 has shipped, and this is a major version and there are some breaking changes. So be sure to check out the upgrade guide to make sure that your application will be compatible. And there's a lot of servers that use Rack, so whether you're using Passenger, Puma, Thin, Unicorn, and or if you're using something like Rhoda, Pedrino, Ruby on Rails, Sinatra, or some others, then you ultimately would be affected by this. Right now, Rhoda and Utopia are Rack 3 compatible, and the Falcon web server is Rack 3 compatible. However, if you're using Puma and Ruby on Rails, I would probably hold off on adopting Rack 3 in our applications until there's official support. It's just going to make life a lot easier for maintaining your particular application. The next item, Rails 7.0.4 has been released, and there has been releases for 6.17 and 6.06. And this release was mainly bug fixes and performance enhancements. So if we come down, we can look at the change log, and there's way too much to go over here, but one of the things that I would look at is any kind of deprecation notices. So as you're building out your application and you're upgrading to a newer version of Rails, be sure to keep an eye on your console just so you can see any kind of deprecation notices that get popped in there because those will eventually need to be addressed. However, if you were already on Rails 703, this is a patch version, so there shouldn't be any breaking changes, but there's still some things that you should just be aware of. So I know it's a bit to go through, but I do recommend just coming in here and looking to see if you're using anything that could be affected by these changes. And of course, having a good test suite with decent coverage is always very important. And if you're using multiple databases, then this one could be a very important fix for you, where there was a bug fix in the connection handler methods using all pools. And essentially what this means that if your application was using multiple databases, not all the connections would get flush or cleared out on boot, but instead the application would just establish new connections. But this particular bug would have only affected the applications with one or more roles, and when these methods are called outside of the context of a connected to block. But if you're not using multiple databases, then this fix won't really apply to you. And this one's pretty interesting, where we now have the ability to run only before, around, and after callbacks in the run callbacks method. And this one's pretty interesting because if you are in a situation where you do need to run callbacks when you call the run callbacks method, you may not want all of the callbacks to run. You may want only certain ones or certain kinds of callbacks to run. And so now you have the ability to limit this. And if we look at the pull request, the run callbacks has a new parameter of type. And so that's where you can specify certain callbacks. And so I'm sure that there are some good use cases for this one. And I'm a bit cautious whenever I use callbacks because I found that using a lot of callbacks and especially callbacks that call and mutate other objects, other records, then you could get into situations where you get a recursion going on. Or there could also be a situation where there's so much happening in one simple change that it's hard to trace back any kind of errors. So if you're using callbacks and if you're using the run callbacks method, just use it with caution and definitely just know that it is a tool in your tool belt, but not something that you should overuse. And the last one is the Action Dispatch Cookies JSON Deserializer discards Marshall dumps. And if an application reads a Marshall dump, the JSON parse error is raised without clearing the cookies. And this happens when the cookie serializer is set to JSON. And so I don't know if I really came across this error before. I think mainly because I don't mess with cookies too much. If there is something that I do need to store in a cookie, then it's usually going to be very simple data. For one, a cookie has a very small size that you can actually store stuff in there. So it's not going to be something that's really good for storing a lot or complex data. And it looks like this bug fix could happen for some people who don't visit the application for a long period of time. If you've recently upgraded to Rails 7 using the new load defaults of 7.0. And of course, this is probably the most concerning bit. And I'm really glad that this bug fix made it in is requiring the user to manually clear their cookies isn't a great fix simply because 
that's going to cause an action on each user that this affects. But then also you have situations where maybe one of the users of your application isn't so tech savvy. And so the advice that you're giving them, they are going to be a bit weary of. And as a maintainer of a website, that's not something that we want. So in the past eight days, we've had 35 people contribute to the Rails framework. And so I appreciate each and every one here who is helping to make Rails a better framework and all the time and contributions that you have put in and making it better. We really would not have such an amazing framework without you all. And so again, I just want to give a sincere thank you. And again, it looks like we have a lot of first time committers who have committed to the framework. So again, thank you very much. And so that's a wrap for the video coverage of This Week in Rails. If you do want to receive this newsletter, you can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.in.rails to receive an email of the weekly updates. Again, this is not a publication that I create. It is one that I simply provide a video coverage of. And if you are going to be upgrading your Rails applications, if you're going from 703 to 704, it is a pretty small change. And you can probably do that without worrying too much, especially if you don't have a good test coverage. However, if you are coming from older versions of Rails, make sure that you have adequate test coverage. It is going to give a lot more confidence in the code as we are doing these upgrades. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.